Hi, good morning, guys. Let's get started. Uh, today, I'll give you a quick talk about scurvy. Um, so this is just what we are going to cover today. And we'll start off with uh, some of the history of scurvy. So we know that scurvy is another name for vitamin C deficiency. And we don't hear about it very often these days. But we know that it's been um, uh, this disease has been known since um, very ancient times. Um, so we know that it's commonly um, told about uh, in some of the stories about the sailors that went to the sea for long voyages and they experienced uh, some of the symptoms of it. So they were deprived uh, of a steady supply of fresh produce such as fruit and vegetables. And now let's continue. <laughs> so. Got it. Okay, so they were deprived of steady supply of food and they developed some of the symptoms of scurvy. So in particular, uh, they developed some spots and gum bleeding and teeth loss as illustrated on the bottom diagram. Uh, so yeah, they also experienced some um, symptoms of anemia, uh, leg swelling, and in particularly ulcerations, um, and as I said, loss of teeth. And before they came up with the um, solution for this problem, uh, many people have died from it. Um, so there was... Uh, once got a chap called James Lind, and he recommended that they use fresh lemons um, in the diet of the seamen to actually eradicate the disease, and surprise, surprise, it was eradicated. Um, the most recent uh, outbreaks occurred during the Irish potato famine uh, back in 1845, um, which gives you a hint that um, potatoes are the source of vitamin C, um, as well as during the American Civil War. and. The most recent documentation of the outbreak was in Afghanistan um, in early 2000s following the war and drought, which stopped a uh, steady supply of uh, fruits and veggies. So just a bit of um, epidemiology of scurvy. So the incidence uh, of scurvy is higher in men than women, with a ratio of four to three approximately. And there is a bimodal age bracket distribution, which means that very young people get, may get it, or very um, uh, old people. So. Um, Infants of five to 10 months may develop vitamin C deficiency, but it's interesting enough that it's uncommon to see um, scurvy in infants of less than seven months old because they are being breastfed and breast milk is uh, a good source of vitamin C and prevents um, the deficiency of the vitamin. Or that's also seen in men of more than 60 years of age. Uh, who else is at risk? Uh, people uh, with chronic malnourishment in developing countries, as well as people living in refugee camps. Older people, especially those who live alone, uh, people who overcook their meals and destroy vitamin C with heat, people with increased alcohol consumption, smokers, as well as people with some malabsorptive conditions such as Whipple's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or those undergoing cancer chemotherapy. All right, now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. And on this slide, we'll focus on um, the symptoms uh, that are often seen in kids. So quite often it starts off with um, malaise and lethargy. And after being deficient one to for one to three months, uh, kids may develop shortness of breath or bone pain. And that um, myalgia may be um, a result of reduced carnitine production. So there are some skin changes that may be seen, such as roughness of skin, bruising, fatigue, as well as poor wound healing. So bleeding gums and loosening teeth, as I already mentioned. Um, mood changes. These may actually um, come on b before the physical symptoms. Uh, then there is dry mouth and dry eyes. And during some later stages, jaundice, edema, oliguria, neuropathy, uh, as well as uh, fever and convul convulsions. Um, swelling of all own bones because of subperiosteal hemorrhage and ultimately death. And if you look at the first image, we have a photo of a kid with the uh, scorbutic rosaries or um, costochondral separation, which is shown just here. Uh, commonly, children with scurvy present in this flexed position uh, and they refuse to move. And there is um, another sign that seen in kids, uh, scorbutic tongue. And what you see in adults is mostly that roughening of the skin uh, and profuse, uh, profuse bleeding, especially in legs. All right, so what actually causes it? So just a uh, fun fact for you. So a lot of species, they have a gene that allows them to produce their own vitamin C in the body and they never get deficient. But humans have lost that ability and it's unclear why. 
but we know that there is that color gene that helps you to create enzymes that is required for vitamin C production. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we don't have that. Uh, so we know that it's contained. So we, we need exogenous um, source um, of vitamin C. So we know that lemons, oranges, and other citrus fruits, um, as well as fresh green veggies like broccoli, spinach, they contain vitamin C. And the deficiency of those products can lead to uh, low vitamin C levels. Okay, now a bit on pathogenesis of scurvy. So as I mentioned, we are unable to synthesize uh, vitamin C or l ascorbic acid because we uh, lack the enzyme called gallo uh, l gluconolactalone oxidase. So it's not functional. Um, so that's why when we don't have a sufficient intake, we develop vitamin C deficiency that leads to decrease in chondroitin sulfate production as well as collagen synthesis. And funny enough, that's why you see uh, so many beauty products with vitamin C because they promise that you'll uh, have a better collagen production in your skin. Right, so moving on, uh, if there is a vitamin C deficiency, there is impaired intracellular hydroxylation of collagen peptides, which results uh, in altered bone formation um, with the greatest um, effect occurring at metaphyses of long bones, such as this femur. So that results um, in defect in the spongy bone of the metaphyses, and that's really important uh, in kids because uh, they have the greatest demand for collagen of type one when they're developing and when they're forming new bones. So the diagnosis of scurvy is commonly made based on the history, clinical presentation, as well as radiological findings. Um, and it's confirmed when the symptoms result with vitamin C administration. Um, laboratory tests such as blood tests are not routinely done, but one may opt to um, do a fasting serum at ascorbic acid level. Um, X-ray, we'll discuss further in the next slide, but the recommended, so the recommended modality um, of, of imaging is X-ray because it's quick and it shows us everything we need to see. Uh, some of the common uh, X-ray sites are wrists, um, knees, as well as sternal edges of the ribs as I've shown um, on, the, on the pictures. So it may be commonly confused with uh, vasculitis, thrombocytopenia because of the spots and bruising, as well as multiple myeloma or folliculitis. Right, moving on to imaging. Um, so what, So we ha here we have two x-rays. So the one on the left, um, we have a femur, fib, and tib, as well as here. Uh, so what you see first is generalized osteopenia. So you can see that, um, so it's especially seen on the tiny picture. You can see that the uh, bones appear way too transparent. Uh, so you can see the cortical thinning, which is pencil point cortex. It's unclear on this, uh, x-ray, but you can clearly see on the small, smaller one that the um, cortex of the bone is really elongated and it's thinned out in the middle of it. Okay, you can see some periosteal reactions. Just going to show you with a pointer. Uh, so it's due to subperiosteal hemorrhage and you can see the reaction as a calcification on the top of it. Hemophrosis um, may be seen. There is a Wimberger ring sign, which is this one. So it may be um, a result of bleeding as well. You can see Frankenlein. So it's just here. And essentially it's a dense zone of calcification. Uh, then you can see uh, the trauma field zone, which is this loosened bit above um, uh, uh, above the line of Frankel. And then we can see um, what's called Pelkin spur or Pelkin fracture. So Pelkin spur is essentially this uh, line. So uh, it results from the destruction of bone on multiple fractures. Uh, and the Pelkin fracture may be um, a metaphyseal corner fracture, which can be not clearly seen here, but we'll look at it under further x-rays. So you can clearly see the Pelkin fracture on this x-ray on the right, and you can see multiple fractures on the bottom uh, of this femur as well as you can clearly visualize on these x-rays uh, white line of Frankel, which is just this one, as well as here, uh, and the Wimberger sign. Okay, uh, and then on the left x-ray, you can also see the subperiosteal uh, bleeding, and you can see that it appears as like a swelling of the bone. So the treatment, uh, quite commonly, just vitamin C administration, 
So it's recommended one to two grams of vitamin C daily for the first two to three days, and then it's halved uh, or reduced to 500 milligrams per day for the next week. Afterwards, uh, it's one to three months of vitamin C of 100 milligrams, and the maintenance dose to prevent any relapses is 70 to 90 mg a day. So the symptoms such as fatigue, lethargy, pain and anorexia confusion resolve within a day, uh, but things like bruising, um, hemorrhages, gum bleeding and weakness improve within uh, one or two weeks and the bone changes that I've showed you on the x-ray they are very likely to resolve within a few weeks um, and I guess that's it thanks guys <laughs>